Hi there, it's Laura from Get Organized HQ and one of my favorite topics is decluttering. It's free and it makes a huge difference in your home and I wanna talk about how you can declutter your house in just one day. So the first thing you might wanna know before we dive into exactly how to do this is is it even possible for me to declutter my house in a day? And the answer is maybe. <laughs> I know that might not be the most satisfying answer, but it is the absolute truth. So it depends on how big your house is and the level of clutter in your house, whether you can actually declutter your entire house in a day or not. Um, if you have like a really big house like I do, or if you have quite a bit of clutter, then obviously you are not going to be able to get to every single space in your house in one day. So in that case, I would suggest prioritizing your main areas, but you will be shocked at how much you can get done in like one day. Uh, I would set aside about eight hours, like a work day, like think of it as like going to work and working diligently. And I think you'll be shocked at how much progress you make. I've also found when I do these like marathon decluttering sessions like this, that it really starts flowing into all other areas. So maybe I set aside a Saturday and I, I get it done, I get a lot done. Then I'm just kind of in a decluttering mindset for the next few days and the family usually gets on board because they see how much progress it is. And I think that while I, there are a lot of methods out there that encourage a little bit at a time and I think that is wonderful and you can, you can totally do that. There is something magical about seeing just this serious progress. Because if I just spend two or three minutes a day or if I just declutter one item a day, it's going to be a long time until I really see that transformation. I really start to feel that burden lift. When you do this in a day thing, you're going to see the difference and it's going to feel amazing. Step one in this process is to pick the day that you're going to do this and clear your calendar. So if you don't actually look at your calendar and put this on the calendar, I'm going to guess that you're not actually going to get it done. So, you can find a Saturday perhaps where you can work from like nine to five or something like that. I, I think it's best if you can do it all in one day. If you have to break it up into a couple days, that's okay. But see if you can find a time when you can really dedicate a few solid hours to this. The next step is to prioritize where you want to declutter. So you're going to have to start somewhere and Prioritize where that is. And I would stick with the areas that you see most often or that are bugging you the most. So just ask yourself like what areas are just absolutely bugging me? Start with those, make a list, and then the areas that you see most often. So I would end with an area that I just almost never see and I would start with the areas that like I'm seeing every day that would have the potential to make the most difference. And I want you to make a list and be as detailed as you can. So instead of just saying living room, say, Start with corner table in the living room or something like that. Be even more specific because living room is very broad and it's gonna be hard to know where to start there because you're gonna be making a lot of decisions on declutter day. So if you can take away the decision of where to start and what order to go in and kind of do that ahead of time, I think you're gonna thank yourself. Now, the day before or a few days before your declutter day, you're gonna to wanna to gather up your supplies. You wanna make sure you have everything on hand. I want you to make the most progress on declutter day and not be looking for stuff and trying to get ready. So here's the things that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have. First of all, trash bags. There's always trash, no matter what. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have those. Next up, I love using laundry baskets. So I have two or three of these are on hand so that I can primarily put stuff in that goes to another spot in the house. If I had to stop every single time decluttering and walk the item to where it goes, that'd be really inefficient. So I like to use a laundry basket for those. I also use them for my returns. So I like to have some of those. You're also gonna need a donatable box or something that you can literally put the items you wanna donate that then that entire box can go to the donation place of your choice because what you don't wanna do is put it in a bin that you actually wanna keep. That's gonna be yet another step of transferring that bin to something that you can actually drop off. So make it like a box. I mean, ask your friends if you don't have enough boxes, like cardboard boxes that things have come in, or maybe you actually have some large old bins that you wanna get rid of. Put it in something that you can just hand over to the donation place.
And lastly, you're gonna to wanna to have signs that you can put around as you're going through this process so that you know what each of your bins or boxes or piles are for. And I have made a set for you that you can just hit print if you wanna use those or if you just wanna get like a piece of paper or post-it and use marker, you can totally do that. Um, I like these because they're kind of pretty and just easy to print. And so you're gonna go ahead and get those signs ready. Now, one other item of prep before you even get to your declutter day, and you know, they say that planning saves you time and it really does. So the day before you wanna make sure that all of your routine tasks are done. So like that your dishes are done. I especially want you to get your laundry done and put away because we need those laundry baskets. And in my home, I literally only have three laundry baskets. I don't allow myself to get any more because that just will help me, give me an excuse to pile up laundry. So um, go ahead and get all your laundry done. Um, and you just don't want those routine tasks hanging around. Plus it's really hard to declutter around piles of like laundry or dishes. So make sure you're caught up on all of those things. And you might even wanna go ahead and prep an easy dinner, like something you can throw in the crock pot or if your family eats out periodically, maybe that's a good day to eat out or do takeout. All right, so it's finally declutter day. One thing that I like to do is make sure that I am dressed for the task at hand. So I actually put on like workout clothes complete with tennis shoes or whatever you call them in your area, sneakers, athletic shoes, like, you know, lace up shoes. And I put my hair up in a ponytail or on top of my head. So like, I feel like I am in work mode and we are ready to go. I'm not afraid to get dirty. I'm not afraid to like squat down on the floor and get things out of corners. Um, we're ready to go. And then once you're ready, take that list that you made of the areas you want to start with and pick your first area to begin. And what I want you to do is pick that area. And if it's too broad, make it smaller. Like you can never go too small. So let's say you're starting with a bedroom and there's a dresser in there. So first of all, take the bedroom, break it down. I want to start with the dresser. Then take the dresser, break it down. I want to start with drawer one, two, three, four. Now, if, it, if you are one of these people that loves making a list and loves crossing them off, then I want you to go ahead and take the extra four to five minutes to literally say drawer one, drawer two, drawer three. If you are someone who just doesn't get a lot of joy out of like that crossing things off, then I don't think you need to do this. I think you can keep track in your head that you're going through each drawer systematically. But the, the point is that I want you to start with something as small as, as, as you can reasonably get and go through that entire space until it is done. What I don't want you to do is open up a dresser drawer, take two or three things out of there, then open up like another one, take two or three things out of there, and then run over here to your makeup table, take something out of there, run out to the living room. Like, no. Uh, the point here is that you're going to touch every single item and you're going to go through something until it's done. That is the way that you build up momentum faster and the way that you visibly see that progress. Because if we just go and take like the easiest things out of every space, we don't see a lot of progress. So when you're actually working in the area, I want you to take each item, pick it up. I like touching every item within reason to just make sure that I've made a decision about everything. And you're gonna make a decision about that item. There is no like talking yourself out of it. There's no going to something else. So it's like forcing you to make those decisions make the decisions as quickly as humanly possible. Like you just wanna be a decision making machine because if you deliberate on every single item, like should I keep this? Would we ever use this? When did I get this? How much did I pay for this? Oh my goodness, <laughs> you're not gonna make a lot of progress. So it's about those quick decisions and you're gonna train your mind like quick decisions. And when you pick up each item, I wanna simplify this for you. I don't want you to be overwhelmed and I don't want you to be thinking about everything about that item, I want you to be thinking that you have five options. There's only five categories that that item could possibly go in. So decide which category it is. The first one, the easiest, trash. It's literal trash, like no one could use it. It's spent, literally throw it in that garbage bag. The second one is that you're gonna keep it and not only are you gonna keep this item, but it stays where it is. So like whatever drawer you're in, whatever shelf you're in, it's already in the right home. So boom, very easy. You just put it right back and you're good to go. Thirdly, you could decide to keep it, but it, it's in the wrong place. It doesn't actually belong wherever it is that you're decluttering. That's when I like to pull out my handy laundry, laundry basket with the sign for uh, keep in another place in the home and just place it in there. Thirdly, it could be a return either to a store or to a person that you borrowed it from. 
and I have another laundry basket with a sign for this. So anytime I encounter something that is returned, I just put it in there. And the last one is it could be, you're gonna pass it along and donate it. So I will put it in the donatable box if it belongs there. So every single item I pick up, I quickly decide which of the five categories it goes in, I put it in there, and then I move on to the next item. As you're doing this, when your basket or laundry basket of it goes elsewhere gets full, I, that's when I want you to stop and go take those things to where they go. I don't want you to stop for every single item. That's gonna be inefficient. I also don't want you to build up like seven laundry baskets full and then you get to the end of the day, you're too tired and you've almost created more of a mess for yourself. So gets full, that's your signal, go put it away. And I also think that's a nice break. Like you get to move around, you get to kind of think about something different, place the items where they go. Do not skip this step. I will tell you from personal experience, the kind of person I am, I just wanna make this decluttering progress and I just wanna keep making these piles bigger. And then I do get overwhelmed and that's when it gets drug out over a few days when I didn't really intend to. So when that basket gets full, that is your cue to go put those items away. All right, so you're just gonna keep doing this for the allotted time. I would encourage you to take breaks maybe every um, hour or two, just sit down for five minutes, listen to something. Of course, take a break to eat. You wanna be fueled well, so you have a lot of energy to do this. And then when you wrap up your session, I want you to make sure you don't leave anything behind. So no matter how full that return elsewhere in the house, you know, things are gonna keep that belong elsewhere, no matter how full it is, I want you to go put those away. Then I want you to take out the trash, like take it to your trash bin or wherever it goes so it's not just laying around. Then I want you to take those donation boxes, put them in your trunk, ready to donate. And the return items, I want you to put them a different place in your car, maybe the back seat. You don't want to confuse the return and the donation. Um, get those in your car. And then this part is critical. I want you to pull out your calendar and schedule the time when you're actually going to take them to the donation center and to wherever you're going to return them to. Go ahead and do that. If you don't do that, this is going to drag out forever. And you're going to drive around with the donation boxes in your trunk for like six months. Don't do that. And I mean, bonus if you live close to a donation center and you can just take it right then. I know sometimes when I do this, it's already closed. I can't do it right then, but I do schedule in a time so I make sure that I'm getting that done and it's gonna be completely off my plate. So I hope you feel amazing once your decluttering day is done. I would love to see pictures, share it with me. And if you want lots more decluttering inspiration, like especially the help with deciding what to keep and what to get rid of, go ahead and click below. I have an entire decluttering playlist for you and maybe you can even put those on while you declutter.